blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It must not suffer loss. Come on and sing. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's just give God a great praise as we come today. Certainly, God is the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. And Holy Spirit, we petition you. and We thank you for even this day for life, health, and strength. How many of you know that God is working on your case? Hallelujah. Come on, say it. God is working on my case. Hallelujah. As we tag team tonight, we're just going to... I believe God for what he's going to speak with us on today. Amen. I'm going to tag team with Deacon Lipford today. He's going to take the majority of it today. But those of you who are online, we welcome you. Come on, let's welcome our online visitors. Amen. And certainly we honor the Lord on today. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as we've been uh, sharing just in these series of sermons. We've been really just moving at the impulse of the Holy Spirit tonight. And uh, tonight we want to, uh, particularly as we've been continuing to pray over these mountains, we've been praying for this mountain of family for a long time. Uh, but in general, as I always tell you, brothers and sisters, that um, evil spirits, uh, they operate, amen, through people. If, if an evil spirit comes, it has to have somebody to work through. Amen. And so we have to uh, understand in this time and season, we're going to have to learn how to deal uh, with strongholds. Okay. And so that's what we're going to talk about uh, tonight. Uh, as Deke just, we're going to go with the flow of the spirit. Uh, and of course, uh, as we continue to move forward, uh, we want you to make sure that you're continuing uh, to hit your prayer targets as we 
uh, have shared uh, our method for praying. Amen. Uh, as I've been saying uh, to you often that if you want a sure way uh, to go to sleep, you know, you just try to lay in the bed and pray or lay in the bed and read your word. Uh, but I pray that you have been practicing uh, walking around your house and even today during prayer. Uh, the Lord released uh, a word today that we're going to have to start learning uh, how to pray the scriptures again. Amen. When Jesus was tempted, uh, he was by himself. Of course, he was hungry and fasting. Uh, when he got to the point of where uh, he was ready to, uh, or excuse me, where Satan was ready to tempt him, he did not have to come up with words. Many of us are getting confused because in this season, we're trying to find what to say. Uh, we're overwhelmed in our own explanations when God simply wants us to begin to pray his word. And that's why in that moment of temptation, when he was tempted with the bread, he did not come up with his own uh, summary. He didn't, he didn't consult the latest physician. He just simply said, it is finished, or excuse me, it is written. It is written that man should not live. I'm still on Easter, right? It is finished. It is written that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So as you deal with strongholds, as you begin to pray, um, I caution you too uh, to begin to pray the scriptures. Whatever issue it is that you are going through, find the scripture that meets that need and begin to pray it. Everybody understand? So that uh, along with walking your home, hitting your prayer targets, uh, we want you walking and praying. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. You all look blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I thank God for the opportunity to be here with Pastor and with you all to share the word of God. Amen. It has been a blessing for me. I don't know about you all coming every um, week and getting that blessed word. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And um, but um, um, Pastor called me yesterday. I was a surprise, you know. And I, the Lord knew right at that moment I wasn't on the line. I was a, a break right off being, and, and I saw New Jerusalem, and I answered, and it was Pastor. And, and I, after I got done talking with him, I said, "Lord, you know exactly what you're doing." Amen, amen. And we know in the past um, when Pastor when he started out with um, some of the, this teaching. And remember when he had talked about um, about taking every um, not, we're going to talk about talk, taking every thought and captive tonight, but guarding your spiritual atmosphere from anxiety. How many remember that? Amen. That was blessed. How many many remember when uh, Pastor and Deacon Hines talked about the um, praise? Amen. Amen. And with Pastor Jones with the conversation, guarding your words. Amen. Amen. That's been some blessed word. And tonight we're going to be talking about um, taking every thought captive. And Patrick mentioned one of the key words that we're going to talk about with strongholds. There are some key words that we're going to talk about tonight. And stronghold is one of them. And thought is another one. And, and, and the mind, all these things, are, those are some key words here. But uh, our scripture, our main scripture we're going to be talking about is coming from 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. And it's starting with verse 4 and 5, but I want to start with 3. I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to give another scripture, and we're going to come back to that, okay? So if you will, if you have your Bibles with you, if you would turn to 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, and I'm going to start with verse 3. It through five. And it reads as follows. Second Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Get that? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. And we all know what war is. War is battle. In other words, I'm walking in the flesh, but when it comes to my warfare, I don't war in the flesh, in the natural, when we're talking about flesh, in the natural. Yes. Oh, Paul, what are you saying here? So he's telling me right off then that I'm, I don't use man-made material devices yes. in a war. Well, what, what, what kind of war are you talking about, Paul? Mm -hmm. So this way, we're going to come back to this, but we know the famous scripture, go to Ephesians, the 
sixth chapter. Yes. And we're going to come back to this, but go to Ephesians, the, the sixth chapter. Put a, put a pen there. I'm not going to read the whole thing. We know about what that talks about, about the spirit of warfare. But since Paul said this mm -hmm. in 2 Corinthians 10, 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. In Ephesians, the sixth chapter, I just want to read verse 10 and 12. And 12 is the key verse. But he said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Yes. I'm talking to saints here, right? He's saying, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong not in yourself, but be strong in the Lord. Not of your own might, but in, in his power That's it. of the Lord. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, Paul is, I'm beginning to get a more understanding when he said that for though we walk in the flesh, but we do not war according to the flesh. Verse 12, he says, for we wrestle. Mm -hmm. We wrestle against flesh and, we wrestle against, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Yeah. We do not. Again, I'm flipping back over. This is the way I do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Second Corinthians, it says in verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, right. we do not war according to the flesh. Ephesians 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. And I look up words, even though I know what they mean, we know mm -hmm. what they mean, but for the sake of it, I like looking them up and, and get the meaning because what we're talking about, we all know what wrestle means, don't we? Yes, sir. And I looked it up for the sake of wrestle, to contend by grappling with and striving to trip or throw in an opponent down or to get them off balance. Also, to combat in an opposing tendency or force. But I like this one right here where we're zeroing in, Pastor. Wrestle, to en engage in deep thought consideration or debate, since we're going to talk about casting down imaginations. This here when Paul said we wrestle not against. So that word wrestle, to engage in deep thought. Mm -hmm. I know I got a lot of witness out here because we all have experienced some thoughts that we had here as we get up into this. So to wrestle. So Paul said that not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 yeah, and, and, and I, he stirred me up on something. Listen to how complex and how organized Satan's army is. Read that again, and I want you to listen to how organized Satan's army is. Verse 12. Yeah. Okay. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh -huh. but against principalities. Uh -huh. Principalities. Against powers. Powers. Against the ruler of the darkness of this age. Rulers. A spiritual host of wickedness. Host. Okay, watch that word host. That's an army word. Yes, yes. That means that, that, that this, is, this is a true army. Now, one of the things about spiritual warfare is you've got to understand is that if you are a citizen of the kingdom of God through faith in Christ, you are automatically at war with the kingdom of Satan. And what we're understanding is, is that Satan does not mess with you as long as you're in his army. Hallelujah. But the moment you make your choice to be on the Lord's side through salvation, watch this, you're automatically drafted into the kingdom of God. Now, the interesting thing about the kingdom of God is this, or the interesting thing about war is this. War if, 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 if America today were to go to war, all of the citizens yeah. of America would be 
in war automatically, although we are not, quote unquote, on the front line. Are you hearing me? But the war affects every citizen. When a person or a demonic force goes into a community and wage war, you may not be a part of the official military, but that particular community then is automatically at war. So as a citizen of the kingdom, you are automatically at war with the kingdom of Satan. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers, darkness, against spiritual wickedness in what? In high places. places. See, there's a governing world, and, and, and you have to wrestle with this, because automatically we think that Satan is in is in hell, right? But but th- there's a world where the enemy is at war with the angels of God. And as we're talking about this reality of being in war, what we what we what we experience whenever we experience trials, tribulations, hardship, we're experiencing the 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 effect of being at war amen against our flesh and against the kingdom of satan i'm yeah. talking too much yeah. go ahead Dick. No, yes sir no you're not <laughs> no you're not amen. yes amen as pastor said mm-hmm. you know we're in a war right so hey let me see how many are here children of god i just want to see you raise your hand oh yeah so you're in the warfare and with that now let's go back to 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Yes. And I'm going to start back with verse 3. Since, and, but, but, now that was a great, awesome, yes. inter, you know, the clarity of this. Verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. You're a child of God, you're in war. Mm-hmm. Really, you, you, when, you, when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, <laughs> you, you signed up for that war automatically. Whether you want to or not, you are. Now, verse 4 says, for the weapons, mm-hmm. for the weapons of our warfare, since mm-hmm. we're in war, you are this in war. Now Paul's going to mention about some weapons. Yes, sir. He said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not worldly. They're not man-made devices. Mm-hmm. They're not. Mm-hmm. But guess what? They're mighty in God for the pulling down of strong holes. Yes, sir. Let's deal with that for a minute. Can we just deal with that for a minute? I'm ready for it. Okay. What is a stronghold? A stronghold, walls of resistance built up in our minds. Write it down, church. Write it down. Say it again. Strongholds are walls of resistance built up in our minds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Strongholds are built when you start to develop thoughts and belief systems that do not line up with the word of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Say it again, one more time. Strongholds are built when you start to develop thoughts and belief systems that do not line up with the word of God. I want to illustrate this before you move on. I need, uh, come on, you stand up here for me, Elder Cheney. Come on, uh, Pastor Jones. Come on, Deacon Hines. Amen. Uh, come on, let's see. Come here, DeAndre, come on. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, Deacon Jacks. You come on here with these strong brothers in here. Now, in the Old Testament, God, God speaks of a stronghold really being a fortress, Right. But 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 we're talking particularly about demonic strongholds. Now, a fortress is set up in front of a kingdom. Watch this to protect things from getting in, but to also close things so that anything getting in can't get out. Y'all enclose me. Now, this is what. This is what strongholds look like. Uh, This is what strongholds look like. It stops those things 
that could potentially come in to free you from getting in. But then the stronghold also wants to keep you bound on the inside of what of what you're in. And so when we experience the resistance of God, I'm trying to get out. But this stronghold keeps me in. And then those who are coming in on the outside are trying to break me out. Right. But then they're encountered with something that's keeping them from getting to me. And what strongholds try to do is they try to stop God from getting to you and say, and they stop you from getting to God. But somebody ought to raise your hand and testify. Every stronghold in my life is coming down. And that's what you got to thank you deacons. This is what you have to understand. Uh, the, the strongholds keep the mind in bondage. Why? And a stronghold will keep the word of God from freeing you, right? The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. And so this is what we see when we deal with strongholds. We see people trapped in something, and then we also see people who are blocked from another thing again. So you're, 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 you're bound uh, with, with, with worry, not having peace. Well, you're bound with worry, and here comes peace trying to get in. But that thing has you, has you trapped on the inside, right? And so this is what we're talking about. Uh, uh, there's so many scriptures that talk about uh, the barrier. You know, that's why Paul often talks about uh, uh, be anxious for nothing but by prayer and supplication, right? Make your request known unto God. But then he says to that cure to anxiety, right, is think on those things that are pure and those things that are lovely. And some of our family members are tied down with so many strongholds that nothing can get out and nothing that is useful can get in. And so what begins to happen is when God breaks a stronghold, yeah. Satan's army is that stronghold, yeah. Yeah. right? When you're in the world, you're absent for God, Satan has a stronghold on you. And so what God begins to do is when he frees you, he says, okay, you were in the enemy's army before, but now yeah. I'm putting a hedge of protection around you. Yeah. So, hallelujah, this is, this is the truth. Satan's stronghold, when you come out of a stronghold, is actually the Holy Spirit's fortress. Right? So, so now, uh, now um, the, the peace of God, what that surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind. So then, while Satan has you... Uh, confined in the stronghold what he knows that if 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 I get this woman out of this stronghold then now they're switching armies and now I've got the peace of God I've got the justice of God I've got the salvation of God I got the provision of God and the thing that the enemy does not want us to do is break strongholds yeah. Because if we break strongholds, then we're automatically a, um, a, a part of the army of God. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, mm -hmm. Pastor. And thank you for that great yeah. um, illustration there. With that illustration, yeah. write this scripture down and read it when you get home. Over in Joshua, the sixth chapter, read mm -hmm. the whole chapter, um, mm -hmm. the sixth chapter of Joshua. You know, and like when Pastor said, now Jericho, verse 1, mm -hmm. was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. None went out and none came in. Mm -hmm. But when you read that, you get home and read that and you'll find out when uh, uh, Joshua listened to the instruction of the Lord, the Lord gave him some instruction. There was some spirit and those walls came down. But guess what? It wasn't through a natural thing, but it does. Because yes. he told him, he says, in, um, every day for six days, march around that city. And then on the seventh day, march around the seven times. Mm -hmm. And the wall came down. And from, if anyone ever read into that whole chapter where they took some kind of man-made thing and tore those war, uh, walls down, let me know. You're not going to find it in the Word. You're not going to find it. I know you're not. Mm -hmm. There was a spiritual thing. And, and speaking with this stronghold, we're talking about it. Throughout the cheats that we you know, and Pastor had covered a lot of them when he first started. Here's just a list. This is not all of them. Some types of stronghold, lust, yes. pride, anger, 
bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, jealousy, selfishness, envy, arrogance, hate, revenge, fear. This one here, toxic relationships. Did you know that's a, that's a stronghold too? Yes, sir. Yes. Anxiety, mm -hmm. emotional depression, oppression, paranoia, ungodly thoughts, and we can go on and on and on about some strongholds. Uh, but, you know, now, with that example the word gives about with Jericho, you read about how that, pulling down to that stronghold. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's amazing, though, with stronghold and that word, like with lust and you could, with a lot of things into there, I'm just for the note of it. It's amazing how David yeah. defeated the giant Goliath. Yeah. But he lost the battle to Bathsheba. Ain't it something? <laughs> Isn't that something? He defeated that big giant, but he lost that battle to Bathsheba. <laughs> Satan knows your weakness. He knows. And deep strongholds, this is the thing. Watch this. Strongholds keep people in, right? Yes. Yes. But it also keeps people, again, like we said, from getting out. And so, and so, and so what Satan is going to do is he's going to intensify what he has to do to keep you in. <laughs> and this is why prayer is not something, you know, we, we take preaching serious, but this is why we have to take prayer because the, 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 if we could physically break our family line from alcoholism or any other ism, or if we could physically do it, if we could just do it ourselves, we would do it. Yeah. But that's the irony of a stronghold that this, brothers and sisters, is a God thing. Yeah. That's why you can't, as I always say, what? Finish in the flesh what you started in the spirit. Yeah. Because the spiritual war is, is different than a fleshly war. Yeah. Yeah. And here we are again, years and years, still trying to solve spiritual issues in the flesh. And this is what strongholds do. Strongholds allow churches to become castles, not kingdoms. Let me say it again. Strongholds force churches to become castles and not kingdom. Kingdoms, that means the whole thing belong to that particular jurisdiction. But a castle, you can set up stronghold, right? And that becomes your little, your little castle. Castle is a big thing. That's why, you know, you know we're comfortable, but... Why limit yourself to a castle when God has given you a kingdom? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And this is what happened. That castle mentality, what happens is we build castles for ourselves when we're supposed to build kingdom yeah. for the community. Yeah. Yeah. And the main issue with strongholds, especially strongholds uh, I think for the local church and community is everybody is interested in building their own castle and that's the issue with family and any other brotherhood or sisterhood that comes along with it that God this 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 army that God is raising up is not just so you can become rich and have your own thing and then God break you out and now you say oh I'm free I got my gifts I got my talents I'm giving my tithes I'm good I'm coming to church no that's castle mentality but kingdom mentality says God you have broken these strongholds over my life a amen just think about all of the strongholds that God has broken over your life but 
he didn't break you out of that stronghold so you could be comfortable and have castle mentality. He broke you out of that stronghold so now that you're a part of the army of God and the army of God is now partnering together to go to Satan's kingdom and now take back every other stronghold and bring it down. When God breaks you through, God breaks you out, he does not break it out so you can build your own castle. He broke you out so that you could go get somebody else and break the strongholds that they're dealing with over their lives. Yes, that question just went on. Okay. And we I and listen, I know it's lecture style, but but definitely if you have a question, amen, make it happen. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, you know, and uh, another thing with the stronghold I just want to mention, you know, one of the first one I said, like with lust, that, give an example, like a, with a stronghold, you know, we know that, that demons, you know, they have to have an entry in and it's through sin, yes. right? A stronghold, once they enter in, but the stronghold gives them a reason to hang around. Yes. For an example, Let's just say the sin was pornography. That's the interest in for that demon to come in with that pornography. Yeah. The spirit of lust is that stronghold mm-hmm. that will cause him to linger around. Mm-hmm. And like Pastor said, that you just get, it's not with just a natural thing. Some of the things I wrote down too with spiritual weapons used to demolish strongholds. Of course, we know the word of God. Prayer, as Pastor said, this demonstration of love armor of God, the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, blood of Jesus, worship, authority of binding and loosing. All those are spiritual warfares that we have to with this stronghold. Amen? Yes. I wrote this all down as well. And I'm going to add this to it. Um, you, you know, as James says, right, um, and, 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 and we, we often think of, of lust, you know, just from a, a sexual perspective, but, but you can lust after power, you can lust after money, you can lust after position or fame. Yeah. But the crazy part is we, ha- we have the answers, but the desire, again, is so strong that somehow it still lures us. And as James says, right, when lust is conceived, right. it gives birth to sin. Right. So the lust is that initiation of, man, I, I, I want this thing so bad or or you can you can become lustful of revenge. Yes. Right. There are so many and I feel it in the spirit. There are so many people who want revenge so bad and it's stopping them from enjoying the fullness of forgiveness and, and embracing the fact that 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 vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Revenge then becomes a stronghold and it becomes lustful, right? Because every time you see that person, you can't control what you feel. <laughs> so then it becomes a stronghold. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Strongholds are not of stones, because we're talking about a spiritual warfare here. Mm-hmm. But of imaginations or arguments. Not high things like high towers and bridges and great fortresses, but of high fault and ad- attitudes. Not taking into oh. captivity of enemy soldiers, human beings, but enemy thoughts yeah. in the mind. And with that, let me read this verse 4. Let me read it again. Mm-hmm. For, we, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down... Some Bibles say imagine arguments, but casting down imaginations, arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ. Now, let me go back for a bit with the verse 5. Casting down imaginations. Now, God gave us an imagination. Mm. We have an imagination. Mm. And we're going to deal with this word here. We dealt with strongholds and some more, but let's deal with imagination for a moment. Because with the imagination, it says here, casting down imagination in every high thing together that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You can use your imagination Mm -hmm. and not exalt God at all. Don't have God in it at all. 
and that's where it's messed up at. God gave us imagination, and I'm going to show you how he, he did that. But the word imagination, the act or power of forming a mental image of something, a creative ability. Let me share, since we've got to deal with this imagination and this thoughts for a moment. Back here in the summertime, I'm going to show you how powerful the, with this thought, these things that we deal with. I'm sitting where Brother Brooks at every Sunday. Pastor was really bringing that word. I mean, oh, the word was going on. All of a sudden, a thought came to my mind. I'm sitting there. This thought, and it said, ooh, I hadn't had no chitlins in a long time. And, I, and that thought of a big plate of chitlins was in my mind. I did not cast that down. I thought about some chitlins. Here it is, hot in August. I think it was in August. And I'm like, oh, man, I sure want some chitlins. I'm sitting right there. This thought. Pastor going on and people, amen. And he just preaching the word that's going forth. But this thought. And I'm, I'm dwelling on this thought. It didn't stop there, Pastor, because with the chitlins, and then I thought of greens. I said, ooh, some collard greens would be nice with that. Ooh, I love macaroni and cheese. I love it. Ooh, some ham would be good with that, potato salad. But with those greens, and I'm saying all this, I got to have some um, hot water cornbread or some cornbread with your greens. Yeah. I had to go home later on and look it on YouTube to, to hear the word because I ain't heard nothing what pastor said here because my thought, the imagination, yes. it wasn't exalting God at all. I was thinking of food. I was not hungry at first, but by the time I got done, I was hungry and I was thinking about, well, I told my friend, I said, well, let's, we need to go down to Detroit. I told her, I said, we need to go down to Detroit to one of those restaurants to get something because I want to satisfy that. That's how powerful the thought process is. But now, now, and when it's conceived, this is what the desire yes. do. And, and guess what? One thought will take residence and it won't leave until you satisfy it. That's right. That's right. I would to God, I had, when I, when I was fasting, like you said, you know, uh, you, you know, when you have, first of all, distraction is very real. I mean, we laugh at it, but one little thing uh, can distract us. And, and like you say, with our flesh, with our body, uh, with our temples, you know, and I said to, uh, to my, I was on the, uh, when I was on the fast, you know, we were just doing uh, beans and vegetables, and I said, as soon as this thing is over, I'm going to get me some pig feet and white beans. I'm going to call Miss Carolyn. I say, listen, I want me a pot of white beans, and don't you put no turkey butt in and put some pork in it. But watch this. You will, the thought would not leave until I satisfied that which I was, what I was thinking about. And in this season, strongholds and desire Oh, excuse me, strongholds and desires go together. You always hear me talk about desire. And this is why when I say desire, the only way one desire can be defeated is that there has to be a stronger desire. Right? right? Because desire will cause you to do something that even you know in your mind is wrong. Cognitively, you know it's wrong to kill somebody. But desire will make you do it anyway. And what we see now in these times and seasons is that happening. I want somebody to read, uh, uh, Deke, before you finish. Somebody read Matthew 12. Get, get Matthew 12 if you got it. or Matthew the 12th chapter. I want somebody to read that real quick. Uh, let me get my... Start at verse 24, Matthew 12, 24. Mm -hmm. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Bel Beelzebub. Beelzebub. Mm -hmm. The prince of the devils. Mm -hmm. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Watch this. 
the Pharisees made that accusation, right? That he can cast out demons because uh, he's now they're saying he's a part of the ruler of the demons. Go ahead. Verse 25. Go ahead. Listen to this in the spirit of a stronghold. Watch this. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. Mm-hmm. How shall then his kingdom stand? Keep going. If I by Belzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. Mm-hmm. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. The kingdom of God is coming. Isn't it strange that Satan's kingdom is so organized? Satan don't even go against himself. But the kingdom of God is divided. And this is why he keeps ruling and people are trapped in strongholds. He takes one little thing and can turn one pastor against another. He can turn people in the same church who theoretically want the same thing, make them not coexist over one little thing, and then Satan's kingdom comes in and rules a church for decades. Strongholds. Yes, uh, mm-hmm. strongholds. Yes. And again, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And in the word you will find even in the Old Testament where remember the Tower of Babel? Remember? Now that was imagination that was against the knowledge of God. Because I'm not going to read all of it, but it says this. This is what they said in in Genesis 11 chapter, verse 4. And they said, come, let us. There it is. Let us build ourselves. Ourselves. A city (laughs) and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us. Let us. Let us make a name for Ourselves. Oh, Where's no. God at in this? Imagination that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God. Let us, let us. Doesn't that kind of sound familiar? Remember Satan when he said, I shall exalt myself. Yeah. I shall then. I, 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 I. <laughs> I. The imagination. God gave us imagination, but it's wrong when it exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And to prove that in the 11th chapter of Genesis, that they were, it was um, exalting themselves against the knowledge of God because God come down and said, wait a minute, wait, wait, let me, I'm paraphrasing, y'all know. God look, come down, and what did he do? Yes. So that lets us know that it was against the knowledge of God. You see, because God wants us to be fruitful and multiply throughout the whole earth. Not you just stand in one place and you go, oh, I'm going to build this. Let us build this and call a name for ourselves. Imagination, how they exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. But now, with this imagination, and I, I like this because with imagination comes vision. That word vision. Ooh, yes. This is the good part here. Mm. We remember our brother Abraham, the father yes. of faith. Let me let, let me let's let me read to um, Genesis the fifteenth chapter. Yes. For a minute, I'm just gonna read a few verses here. Yes. We're dealing with this imagination here. Mm-hmm. Amen. Not the imagination used to exalt itself against the knowledge of God, but this here. See, with imagination comes a vision, but with that to go higher in God. Mm-hmm. You know, if you don't have the vision. It's, I wrote this down here. It was from my note down here. This is what I, I put down. Um, with it. You can't go where you can't see. And I'm not talking about the natural eyes. Mm-hmm. You can't go where you can't see. You can't get there mm-hmm. if you don't see it. I'm talking about with the spiritual eye. Now, y'all remember with Abraham, 
I'm just, I, let me read this. I'm just going to read a few verses. Mm -hmm. Verse 1. At, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. See, with a, a vision. Mm -hmm. Saying, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Elysia of Damascus? Wait, God just told him to iron your buckling shield, and Abraham went south. He did. He went another way because he, he said, well, you didn't give me no seed. You didn't give me no child. What is going on? Then Abraham said, look, you have given me no offspring. I mean, God was saying, wait a minute. I just told you I'm your buckler and your shield. But Abraham, Abram went off with all these things. You have not given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. And, he, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. God had to let him know. That see that Abraham, you think, Abram, you're thinking small. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking big for you. You, you saying an uh, heir uh, in your house, I got something greater. All right. No, you looking at that, that servant in your house mm -hmm. to be your heir. No, that's not it. And God had to tell him that. But see, God had to stimulate his mm -hmm. vision. Yes. Pastor. Yes, that's it. Yes. He had to stimulate his, his yeah. imagination. Mm -hmm. And here we go. Verse 5, where God had to, he said, okay, I have to stimulate Abram's vision. Then he, God, brought him outside and said, look now toward heaven mm -hmm. and count the stars if you're able to do it. If you're able to number them, Abram. Yeah. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. Yeah. But let's just use our imagination for a moment. Abram had to look, oh, wow. Here I am talking about, I'm worried about one offspring. Lord, you ain't gave me one son. And God is telling him, look, let me stimulate your vision. Let me stimulate your imagination. You can't count all them stars, but guess what? You'll see these are your descendants. And here we are today. Are you part of the seed of Abraham? Yeah. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Are you all say you say we all are, look at it. Look at all the people who are before us that are saved. And the one that's going to be saved. Right. It's right here what God said. If you can count them stars, but you can't because it's too many, yeah. so shall your seed be. My God. Abraham, God want us to, you know, our visions can be so small of what God can have for us, but God need to stimulate our vision so we can go out. One thing, Pastor, you know, in, the, in this world, they kind of gets a little bit of it because, uh, you all know, even from the world that worked at GM, I wrote a couple of things down here. Yeah. They even have a, a vision. This is GM. Now, this is the world. Yeah. They get somebody. GM's vision is this. Zero crashes, zero emissions, and they, by the way, they wanted all of us to memorize that. Zero crashes, zero emissions, zero congestion. GM uses the world's largest and most influential tech show to preview new business models and new thinking. They have a vision. They're telling you their vision. They have it. Ford got theirs to become the world's most trusted company designing smart vehicles for a smart world. And going on, Stellantis, Chrysler. As we transform into a sustainable mobility tech company, we are guided by the clear vision and the strategic plan of ways to achieve carbon net zero by 2038. They have a vision. So if the world has the sense to know that vision, how important it is, what about us as children of God? And even, even with that, watch this. Um, Every vision has a visionary. Yeah, yeah. See, Abram could not see it because he had not yet partnered with the vision. God, God already knew what the vision was, and then when he said what he was going to do, three things crept in. Two things for sure. Doubt <laughs> and the timeline. Say, what you talking about? I ain't got no kids yet. Right? Doubt 
and the timeline. One of the things that we have to understand is even with the Tower of Babel, here's what humanity keeps doing when it comes to the vision that Jesus had on the cross or the fulfillment of the cross. It's not your vision. It's his vision. It's not, let me say it again. It's not your vision. It's his vision. And what strongholds want to do, they want to stop the vision for your life, your purpose, your ministry. They, remember that thing. They want to stop the vision from getting to you. And they want to stop you from getting to the vision. So what begins to do? What begins to happen? The vision is still intact. But sometimes God will allow strongholds to manifest so that by the time you get out of there, you'll know it was nobody but God. And then you'll realize it wasn't your vision in the first place. It was his. And so no matter what strongholds come, God's vision for your life will come to pass. But you have to deal with those things uh, that were set forth. The vision of God came, but Abram had to deal with his doubt, and he had to deal with the timeline. But the vision has already been made manifest, but you're going to have to pull down the stronghold. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and praise God. It's amazing that, um, like with, with, as Pastor said, with the, um, with the vision that we have and, um, you know, with the thoughts, it, 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 how the enemy used the thoughts and tried to deter you from the vision, even though you see the vision. I remember, and, and when it comes back with strongholds, another one I want to say, I remember I, in, in, in high school I ran track. And I was anchor in the uh, relay. During that time, I didn't realize, but as I got saved and got into the Word, and I realized, Pastor, that during that time, fear was on me. I didn't think I had fear because I was running and I'm coming in first place and coming second or whatever. But when I look back and realize from the spiritual thing, I had it was some fear that was dealing with because there was this one I never forget. During the relay and anchor, there was this guy from the, my opponent over. He was about like 6'4", tall guy with them long legs. I looked over there, and I'm waiting. I'm saying, oh, he going to dust me a mile. He going to leave me, and I'm going to be so embarrassed. You know, up at uh, Northwestern Houston Stadium, I'm like, this guy going to dust me. I have gotten so much with negativity, all the negative thoughts. I just knew this guy was going to beat me. And when it came time, when I felt that baton, even though I started running, but see, I'm like, oh, he going to catch me. He gonna, oh, I'm, I'm just waiting. See, the thought, I'm thinking, he never did come past me. But I, still, I'm dealing with that fear. And when I got right close by, by, with Deacon Hines, shaking, so I slipped down and fell. And I can hear the people say, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, you know. How the guy, then he come by and came, I came in second. I could have come in first. But because of the stronghold of fear, and I have the scar to this day. And I've been a teenager, that's been years ago. I still have that scar to this day. And when I see it, it reminds me to me. Oh, that comes from because you were afraid. I was much faster than that guy. But because I allowed the stronghold of fear to tell me that you, there's no way you can beat that guy. In the mind, yes, sir. Yes, elder. In the mind. So that's why, and the enemy knows that if I can put the thought and get them to believe in their mind. See, if he can get up and control our thinking, he's like, I can get their destiny. Because see, if they listen to what I'm saying, we know about what Eve, when he approached her, and a lot of people say that, well, you know, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, and the lust of the flesh. But if you go back and read that, mm -hmm. he dealt with her, with her imagination. Because the word said that, even though she said that and said a few things, but that God didn't tell him, but she said, and he told us not to even touch it, but he said, the Lord told him not to eat it. 
But the Bible said that what? She saw that it was good. You got to see that the imagination was going on. And then when I say, and it was good that, you know, wise and be like God and all those things, the imagination was going on, but it was not exalting God in that. Yeah, yeah. And then, too, there's a, there's a deeper truth to the illustration you use, and that is until he, you were the last leg, everyone before him did their job. The race was almost run. He received that baton. But because fear consumed him, the race was forfeited. I hear the Spirit say, for many of us, the breakthroughs and prayers that we've been running, this is the last leg of the race. And when you receive that baton, do not look to the left, do not look to the right, but receive the baton and finish the race. And by all means, finish your leg of the race. Because the irony of it is, is that not only did he not finish where he wanted to do, but it caused the team a win. But this is our winning season. If we understand those strongholds of fear and doubt cannot hinder a race that's already pre, been pre, predetermined for us to run. Uh, let, therefore, let us lay aside every weight yeah. <laughs> and the sin that so easily besets us, the strongholds that so easily beset us, and let us run this race with endurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What, well, Pastor? <laughs> I'm done. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. I think, I think it's important. Yes. Yeah. That exalts us against the knowledge. Say it again. Yeah. Against the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't know what God has promised you, see, if you don't know what God has said about you, yeah, that God says that you are more than a conqueror. Yeah. Yes. Amen. See, see, see. In, 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 in substance abuse, there's a term called stinking thinking. Mm hmm in which we embrace negative thoughts, yeah. fear, and, 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 and strongholds. Yes. But, but in, in, in counseling, we come up with, with, which are counters to your stinking thinking. Yes. You know, uh, 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 so when the enemy tells us that we're defeated, yeah. that's the stinking thinking. What we have to do is have the knowledge of God, which is our counters to stinking thinking, yes. and speak that word into existence. Because if God said it, it's got to come to pass. Hallelujah. The enemy is going to tell you that you're defeated, that he's faster than you, that he's stronger than you, yes. that he's quicker. But God said that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. <laughs> that I can do all things through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yes. So, so, so it's the knowledge of God that gives us the victory. And we have to hold on to that. Matter of fact, we have to bring that knowledge of God into captivity. Yeah. Into the obedience of Christ. And my people are destroyed. And my people are destroyed <laughs> for the lack of knowledge. Right. So, so, so we have to make it upon ourselves to know the God that we say we believe in. Right. It's one thing to say, I trust God. I, how, can you, how can you say you, 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 you trust him with your spirit, trust him with your soul, trust him with your life, and you know nothing about him? Right. Yeah. The people of God now... Uh, have to increase their knowledge of God because that's where your victory is. The knowledge of God is what helps you break out of every stronghold that the enemy is trying to do to keep you in. We're praying today, and just before we pray, there's a song in my spirit, um, Elder in A-flat, if you will. And, I, and I, I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you, we have to get to the point 
brothers and sisters. You, 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 you have to get to the point to where you understand that through the word of God, every stronghold can be broken. And we're going to pray, and I'm, I'm going to sing, and we're going to pray on the way out. We took up on this lesson. Let's thank God for Deacon Lifford tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work because God will do what He said He would do. He will stand by His word and He will come through. Everybody say, No weapon formed against me. Believe it over yourself shall prosper it won't work no weapon no weapon of sickness no weapon of heartbreak no weapon of disease no weapon of anger no weapon every stronghold is being torn down hallelujah 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 brother Ray just sing it one time if you can is he still here Hallelujah. Those of you who are online, we want you to know no stronghold against you is going to prosper. And that you are going to have the knowledge of God to begin to combat the enemy. And so as we pray tonight, I want you to know that the strongholds are being broken. Are you see releasing something? Hallelujah. 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 Those of you who are online. While we're ministering, come on, just begin to praise God. Come on, Lord, and declare. Come on, begin to declare every stronghold over your life is being broken. Come on, in-house. Come on, let's begin to praise God, church. Come on, praise him. Come on, church, open up your mouth. Come on, church. Come on, church. Begin to give God praise. Hallelujah, God. We worship you. It won't work. And so it is in this season that many of you feel God trying to push you to finish your race. And one of the fearful things is you're fearful to drop the baton. But then you're looking to your left or right and you're looking at your opponent. But I hear the Spirit say that even as the man of God released on today, that the stronghold of fear is being broken over your life right now. I said the stronghold of fear is being broken over your life. And that now the only thing that you will have is a reverent fear. And that is the fear of the Lord because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Hallelujah. The Lord is my light. Hi. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And my salvation. Whom shall I feel? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh. The Bible says that they stumble and fail. I thank you that the stronghold is being broken. So Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we petition you today. And we say break every stronghold. We say God, unite us together. Bind our hearts together with love. Bind our hearts together in the spirit and in truth. Oh God, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that we are the army of God. And that the army of God is now invading every stronghold that the enemy has set to stop and keep the people in. And to stop the people of God, oh God, from getting out. And so in the name of the Lord Jesus, every stronghold over every family is being broken right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
we declare every stronghold over the mind the heart the body and the spirit is being broken oh god every stronghold that for those who are represented online we come together to declare the truth of your word that it is true that no weapon formed against us shall prosper and so god we thank you oh god that now the stronghold now that your people of God are being broken now they are a part of the family of God and now a fortress now surrounds them that peace now surrounds them and so Holy Spirit we leave this place but never your presence declaring that every stronghold is broken by faith and by the authority of the word and the power of the Holy Spirit we declare it and we decree it that the strongholds of 1990 are now being broken right now in 2024 the strongholds God of 1972 the strongholds God of 1989 and 1993 are now being broken in the name of Jesus and God we know some of us have been stuck in a stronghold for decades but the stronghold of injustice the stronghold of lack oh God we break that stronghold in Jesus name and so God we give you praise tonight because the strongholds for decades that have tried to keep us in and to stop God's vision for freedom for getting us out we declare in Jesus name that those strongholds are breaking right now and so God we are not going to wait till the battle is over but God this our cry oh God is not to wait till the battle is over but we thank you Holy Spirit that the war has been won and God that the stronghold is broken right now in the name of the Lord Jesus the things that we've been praying for the things that we've been believing God for God now we know that the vision of victory oh God has been summoned so now God we release and we see the strongholds over our children being broken we see the strongholds over our sons and daughters over this community being broken we see the strongholds over our government being broken in the name of the Jesus and so oh God we will not fear based on what we see but oh God we will rely on you to know that you've got your timeline in place to know that you've got your steps oh God strategically ordered and now God even now oh God we have moved from waiting to expectation and so God we break the stronghold of doubt oh God oh God the spirit oh God of doubt even when your priests oh God doubted even another Elizabeth oh God in the New Testament uh, the, uh, he doubted that, 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 that the baby would be born and he was a priest and he became mute uh, but oh God we rebuke oh God the spirit of doubt uh, and we say freedom now arise uh, and we awaken our faith right now in the name of Jesus uh, to totally believe that everything that you said will happen shall come to pass uh, and so God as we leave this place but never your presence uh, we give you glory tonight uh, on a Wednesday night we shout hallelujah we shout thank you Jesus uh, because every stronghold uh, is broken right now in the name of Jesus uh, come on church let's give them praise let's give them worship come on let's give them worship come on every stronghold Every stronghold hallelujah 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 we thank God today we thank God today for this spiritual lesson we thank God today that God's army is rising up and oh God, although Satan's army is organized, we're even more organized because we have now made the decree and the, declare, the declaration that every stronghold that is stopping God's vision from coming to pass, we will not doubt like Abram, but we will embrace it that even though we don't see it, we're relying on the vision of God. 
And so, God, we declare it and decree it in Jesus' name. Every glad heart who love the Lord, clap your hands and thank God. Perhaps there's somebody online who has not received God. We invite you to meet Jesus. Salvation is as easy as ABC. Accept, believe, and confess. Perhaps there's somebody here today, amen, that you're here and you need God. Amen. We are here to guide you through those steps as well. How many of you feel the strength of God in your life today? I said, how many of you feel the strength of God in your life today? And the Spirit says it's not that you're weak, it's just that you're tired from wrestling with those strongholds. And so we need those strongholds to be broken. We have claimed that they are broken. And so now we're walking in the truths of his word. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you tonight. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, uh, because of a, whenever a lesson is actually taught, then the Holy Ghost will actually manifest. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Now, I, I, I have one name, Earl. Anybody yes. Earl? In, in the Earl. I, I, it's an Earl. It's a male. I want to do this person know that Earl. Glory to God. Uh, uh, Lin Linda, glory to God. Come here. Amen. Listen. Amen. Uh, see, here, here's the thing. God manifests. Thank you, Jesus. God manifests. Uh, yeah, is that? Yeah, because I'm looking at you. Glory to God. Yes. Amen. Yeah, yeah, listen. I want you to tell. Listen. Yes. We did we. His, his name Earl. Robert, uh, Robert Earl. Listen, yes. uh, Earl. Amen. All God was saying was an Earl. Listen, yes. I saw the the anointing God come up. Thank you. I mean, it was like right over her head. And said, listen, I want you to know, glory to God. Listen, your brother in the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Listen, the bondage is that he's in. Glory to God. We bind it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we command right now that you loose and let him go right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And touch him, Lord God, from the top of his head to the crown of his feet. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost in yes. Jesus Christ's name, let that Holy Ghost in fire. Yes, Lord God, even so now. Yes. 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 Set him free right now. In Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And we send forth right now the spirit of salvation. Yes. The spirit of mourning, the spirit of suffocation, Thank and the spirit Jesus. of adoption right now. Hallelujah. Calls him, Lord God, is to be saved in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. And we cut out the supply line. Yes, Lord God. We cut out the supply line right now. The resources that he's been taking take to, yes. to pollute the temple of God. So we disallow it right now yes. in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And put angels around him. Hallelujah. Until he commit to you, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and I decree it so now. Yes. In Jesus Christ's name. Yes. Amen and thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Earl, go free. Earl, is Earl free. go Hallelujah. free. Hallelujah. Earl, go free in the name of the Lord. God bless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord God. Hallelujah. The Hallelujah. reason why this is important is because, brothers and sisters, it's ironic. Me and Pastor Jones have not talked, but you always hear me. The Lord has been using this term, attorney. Attorney, 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 attorney pleads the case of one to the judge on behalf of the person that is in need, that is in trouble. Whenever you appear before a judge, you have an attorney. And so the reason why it's important that you begin to put uh, this thing into subjection and that you understand that when God calls out your family members, it's because he's in awakening you so that you 
understand that you are the power of attorney that you are the attorney that God has given you authority to plead your case before the council of heaven and what God is doing is for those who cannot plead the case for themselves what God is doing is he's allowing you to be an attorney in the spirit and plead your loved one's case in front of the judge of the almighty God and I I need everybody in here to begin just for 30 seconds uh, to begin to be an attorney put somebody on your heart that you know needs to be free and let's declare that they are free in Jesus name come on put that person on your heart come on plead their case my sister needs to be free from from anxiety right hallelujah your cousin may need to be free from thoughts your cousin may need to be free your mama may need to be free from whatever she is from but we plead the case and and by the authority of the word that the same anointing that was released today we say case closed I said we say case closed that the verdict has been given that the case has been decided and that the victory belongs to those who are on the Lord's side come on church let's give God praise for it you are the attorney loose your family loose your children plead your case and believe that the, the, the case is solved in the name of the Lord Jesus hallelujah hallelujah I pray that you're doing so online hallelujah as the presence of God is even here on today come on we're standing and as we're leaving hallelujah we've already said the benediction those of you who are online we pray oh God that you understand that this is good ground and so that as you leave today that you will sow a seed those of you who are online a safe secure link is coming up as well you can sow online as well come on let's end this but just by giving God a great praise come on come on let's give God a great worship come on come on praise your way through it hallelujah hallelujah we are free hallelujah God bless you and go in peace Hallelujah.